as clock code gets more and more popular, many developers are switching from other AI coding tools like Cursor and for good reason to clock code because clock code's coding ability is incredibly strong. But with my background as a senior software engineer with over seven years of work experience at companies like Microsoft and now Amazon, I have using clock code in my day-to-day -day work quite frequently. And recently I have found a one major downfall and that is that clock code lacks a professional process for complex projects. And let me give you a quick example of what I mean by that. If you ask clock code to develop a simple application, it will work great. But what happens when you try to build something that's more complex, like an enterprise level SaaS application? Well, a professional developer won't just start writing code. They will start to plan the system architecture, design the UI UX design, set up the security protocols, and creating a testing plan. But clock code, on the other hand, tend to skip these critical professional steps it tends to go straight into generating the code for the entire project at once. And this universal solution might work for a small script, but it falls apart completely when we're trying to build a serious scalable application. That's why in this video, we're gonna take a look at SuperCloud, which is a configuration framework that enhances clock code for our development. And you can pretty much think of it like a predefined workflow added onto clock code for our development. Now, SuperCloud has over 16 essential commands for the most common use case. For example, we have commands for development, for analysis, for QA, or for others, which we'll look more into this in this video. And there's also more than nine personas that we can choose from for AI specialists. For example, we have architect who's responsible for the system design and architecture stuff. We also have front end engineer, back end engineer, analyzer, security engineer, document writer, and more. So we will explore all of them in this video. Now to get started, make sure you have Claw Code installed on your local machine. And if you haven't set up Claw Code, you can check out this video right here where I made a complete guide on how to use Claw Code and how to set up on your local machine. So if you're interested, check this video. Out. But with that being said, let's open a new terminal and set this up. All right. So to do so first, I'm just gonna CD into desktop. And first thing first, we're just gonna git clone this repository. All right, so once it's done, we're just gonna CD into SuperCloud. All right, then after we CD into the SuperCloud, we're just gonna use Python here to install everything. So here, we're just gonna copy this, paste it, and run it. Okay, so now you can see that it has met the system requirement, installation directory already exists. So it's now time to update the existing installation. So we're gonna say yes to this. And here it tells you exactly what it's gonna install. So we're just gonna confirm this. All right, so now you can see that SuperCloud installation has complete successfully. Now we can restart our clock code session and be able to use SuperCloud inside of our session. All right, so here you can see I have opened a empty folder in VS Code. And here, all I have to do is just type in Claude in a terminal. And now I can be able to start our clock code sessions so the next thing we're gonna do is to make sure that we have these MCP integrations added inside of our clock code. We have our context seven, which grabs the official libraries and docs from online. And we also have sequential, which help us with the complex multi-step thinking. Then we also have magic, which will generate the modern UI components. And then we also have playwrights, which is the browser automation and testing stuff. So these are really core for MCP servers we're gonna install. So let's try to integrate them one by one. All right, so to do so, we're just gonna stop the session here. I'm just gonna clear the terminal and here we're just gonna run Claude MCP add transport for the first one, which is contact seven. So we're just gonna add the contact seven first. Then we're also gonna add the sequential thinking. And then we're also gonna install the magic MCP. All right, so now you can see we have our MCP server all added. So if I were to do Claude again, and if I were to do slash MCP, and now you can see that we have total four MCP servers added and all connected. Let's take a look at some commands that SuperCloud offers. So first one, let's take a look at the analyze one to analyze the code projects. So here you can see I have opened the match me code project and let's try to use SuperCloud instead of a clock code session. So now we can be able to use the SuperCloud commands and to do so, we're just gonna use slash here. Now you can see that for SC, which stands for SuperCloud, and you can see that these are all the commands that we can use for SuperCloud instead of a clock code session. So in that case, I'm just gonna use analyze here. And then here you can see I also specify the flags. So here I'm just gonna use the architecture one which is to analyze the architecture of the system. You can find all the flags inside of the flags.md and you can see these are all the flags that we can use for planning, for analysis. And then here you can see there's also persona. So you can find all the persona uh, choices in the core folder. So there is a personas.md file. And here you can see I chose the architect persona which is this one right here, which is the system design and long-term architect uh, specialist, right? It's going to use that persona and this flag. And here I'm using this sequential MCP. So you can find the MCP here. So you click on the MCP.md inside of a core folder. And inside of this, there's also a sequential flag, which we can choose. So in this case, we're using this flag, this persona, and this MCP server to run our analyze work. 
So let's try to do this and it's gonna analyze the project. All right, so let's take a look at what it did. So here you can see it gave us the to-do list. So first thing first is gonna discover the project architecture structure, analyze the database, then evaluate the authentication for the security, generate the reports with recommendations, looking at the state management and the data flow patterns, also looking at the API designs and server actions patterns. Then lastly, it's also gonna take a look at the UI design for the components. And now if we were to scroll down, you can see that it's reading everything. So you can see the checkout one by one for the to-do list. So if if we were to scroll all the way down to look at the report that it generates, so this is the architecture analysis report. So here gives you the system overview, which is the uh, modern data applications built with NestJS 14 with the authentication, real-time messaging, and folder moderation system. Now, instead of our architecture assessment, you can see we have our core architecture patterns. So it gives me a checkpoint for this one. And then here you can see for the security architecture, check for the robust. And then we also have our database schema, well architectured or well structured, very good. And then we also have our state management. In this case, it's scattered. So here you can see it gives me the current pattern. And ideally, there are some concerns that we need to address. And here we also have our API architecture, which is modern, which is checked. And then we also have our component architecture, which is organized, checked as well. And then we also have our performance uh, considerations. So here are the strength and here are the optimizations that we can further improve our current system for the performance. And what's really cool about this is that it also gives you a scalability assessment. So for the current capacity, this is the medium scale. And the medium scale is between one to 10,000 users. And here are the bottlenecks, things like real-time connections using pusher limits. Pusher is basically the third-party tool that we use sending real-time events between users to users. And then there's also database query optimizations and caching. And then scaling path. So there's a couple of things that we can do for for example, using the React query for the server state, uh, implement the Redis caching, database query optimizations, CDN for the static assets like images. And here you can see it lists out the critical recommendations for what are the high priority changes that we need to make and what are the medium priority changes that we need to make for this project. And it also address the long-term architecture, so things that we can be able to improve. For example, microservices split between off and messaging service. And then here you can see it gives me a architecture score based on the current system. So what are the strengths, right? And what are the things to improve? And here at the end, you can see I asked Claude to generate a report in a .md file, and I can be able to review this, commit this change, submit a pull request for this report, right? Now, let's talk about something useful, something that we actually can be able to use in our day-to-day -day development workflow. For example, here I basically put together some common commands that I use for my super cloud inside of my cloud code development. And here you can see the first one, we have our project planning. So let's say we're starting from scratch and we're going to plan a project from scratch, right? So here, first thing first, we're gonna use the slash design command, which is basically assigning the design tasks, followed by we have some flags that we can assign, which you can learn more about those flags inside of flags.md in the repository. And basically what we wanna do is to create a plan for this using the persona architect. Followed by, we can also do front-end development. So we have our command, we have our flags, and then we also have our persona assigned. And of course, you can also add your MCP server onto each command as well, and also adding the prompt using double quotation mark, right? So followed by, hey, what I wanted to do with the front-end development, what I want to build, what I want to design, and so on, right? And then here, we also have back-end development. This is the flags, and this is the persona. We change it to a back-end. And you might notice that what is TDD? Well, TDD is basically test-driven development. So we want to make sure that when we develop things, we want to make sure that we have a test coverage for the things that we write and then we also have a quality insurance or a quality check right this is kind of like our qa which basically makes sure that the software that we develop is working and then we also have our security scan which will scan for vulnerabilities using the scan command and then we also have our performance optimization and then we also have our deployment pre preparation so here we change that to deploy and the persona here i change it to architect but that's basically the commands and the personas that i use for different stages of my development but during this project development you might run into issues so how do you troubleshoot each of those issues i ha also have commands for you as well now here are the commands that i use to troubleshoot things so here you can see first thing first we're going to first identify what the problem is so we're going to use the troubleshoot command and also the investigate flag to investigate what the issue is from the production environment. And then for the persona here, we're using the analyzer to analyze the issue. Now, once we analyze the problem, we might also wanna find the root cause for the problem as well. Here, I basically use the five wise flag, which is a really powerful way to find the root cause of a problem. And basically I use that flag and sequential thinking MCP server to basically find the root cause for the problem using the analyzer persona. And then once we find the root cause, obviously we also wanna analyze the performance. And here we can basically use the analyze command to analyze the coding profile to check the performance of 
of the current code or projects using sequential thinking, using the persona for performance. And finally, after we make the fix, we also want to make sure we uh, improve our code quality and make sure that we are improving our test coverage as well. So we can use something like this where we can be able to improve our implementation by specifying that we want to improve the quality of the code and also set the threshold for the test coverage to a certain percentage using the refactor persona. Now, if you want to get a copy of this, you can also check out my Discord channel where I have created a channel called CodeShare, which I basically upload the files that I just talked about for the plan and also the troubleshoot.md file. So if you're interested, you can check that out. But that's pretty much it for this video. And if you do found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.